The Sims is a series of life simulator games in which you build and manage a household of people known as Sims in a society that closely resembles contemporary capitalist America. This video is not meant as a review of these games, nor is it a criticism of Will Wright or any of the people who worked on those games, because I'm a fan of these games. What I want to ask in this video is, what is The Sims saying as a piece of media politically? Specifically, since The Sims is itself a representation of a capitalist society, I want to talk about how capitalism works in The Sims and what The Sims is saying about capitalism. Number one, capitalism works. In The Sims, the capitalist system that is portrayed is missing a lot of the problems that most people today would normally associate with capitalism. There's no debt, no evictions, wages are more than enough to live on, promotions are easily accessible, education is free, and healthcare is affordable though rarely needed. Issues with generational wealth transfer and wealth inequality just aren't things. Every household starts out with a minimum of 20 grand. A small loan of a million dollars. And all of these things are issues that capitalism on its own has failed to fix. But if you just straight up ignore all of them, then capitalism can seem universally functional. Number two, capitalism is fun. Oh. <laughs> Your sims still need to go to work, and that isn't fun. They come back drained of their energy and other vital essences. But as a reward, they get to participate in the game of consumerism. And the sims want you to know that consumerism is fun. It allows for creativity and design, and the evolution of a space from just four bare walls into a complex living structure. This game loop of work and consumption is the same loop that most of us have to go through in our daily lives. And most of us have realized that this loop doesn't bring much lasting joy. Well, The Sims gets around this because... Number three, capitalism is aspirational. Better items make you able to perform the tasks in your life better. That's true in real life too, to some extent. But The Sims also wants you to know that better things make you happier and better things cost more. In real life, often better build quality and functionality comes with a higher price tag. But just as often, companies add on meaningless bells and whistles to try to get more money out of people who are willing to pay more, a sales tactic called price differentiation. The difference between The Sims and real life here though, is that better items don't just work better, they make Sims happier. Sometimes this is indirect through better fulfilling a Sims needs, but sometimes just being in the same room as an expensive item is enough to make your sim happier. What all this does is directly tie the amount of money your sim has to how happy they can be. Money can literally buy happiness. It's subtle, right? Number four, capitalism is fair. Capitalism in The Sims is a system that's easy to understand and easy to succeed in. If you do the right actions, you receive the right results. You get promoted when you reach the right skill levels and go to work happy enough times. If you go to work sad or fail to spend your ample free time improving yourself, you're not gonna be successful. Your ability to succeed or fail within Sims capitalism is well within the player's control. Due to this conceit, The Sims has left out issues like discrimination. While it's very nice to imagine a world where discrimination isn't a thing, they also chose to leave out aspects like physical disabilities, and mental health issues. And I'm not counting the erratic trait, because for one, it's a stupid caricature of mental health issues that's only a mild inconvenience. But for two, it was originally called the insane trait, which altogether would have been seen as regressive even like 20 years ago. There's lots of possible explanations for why they chose not to include disability, but as far as I've been able to find, they've never directly stated why. And they even talked about including disability in The Sims 4, but we haven't heard anything about that since. Now, in most other works, it's pretty easy to say that something wasn't included because there wasn't enough time, or because there wasn't space for it in the final product. That argument doesn't work for The Sims at all, because The Sims has had an average of eight expansion packs per game, and that's not even including the various game packs and stuff packs. And it's really hard for me to believe that they didn't have time to include wheelchairs when they had time for vampires, werewolves, Katy Perry, and Millie Bobby Brown. But whatever their intentional, stated reasons, 
there is another problem. If The Sims did choose to include aspects like discrimination and disability, it would allow the player to experience a story that would expose the uncomfortable truths of the capitalist system that we live in. And at its core, The Sims is about wish fulfillment and the comfort of control. Playing as a person experiencing discrimination or someone with a physical disability or a mental health issue that prevents them from working exposes a real issue with society. That people in those situations, through no fault of their own, are effectively shut out from the aspirational middle-class lifestyle that The Sims is trying to portray. And because of that, The Sims is basically saying, people like you aren't what people want to see in their escapist fantasies. In an aspirational world, you wouldn't exist. It reinforces the invisibility and stigma towards these groups. And that's a basic issue of representation. But the thing is, there's nothing in the game itself that is inherently incompatible with featuring any of this stuff. It's just that capitalism is not built with these people in mind. In pure free market capitalism, there aren't any built-in safeguards for people who can't work. If they don't have someone to help provide for them, the system basically says they should starve or rely on charity. In the real world, we've developed welfare systems to help provide for people who aren't able to provide for themselves under the capitalist system. The Sims has opted not to include welfare because it would devalue the aspirational conceit of the system if you could just opt out of the Skinner box. However, there is a mod to include welfare in The Sims 4 by user Spintherism on modthesims.info. Here's the first paragraph from Spintherism's description of that mod. During my playthrough of a Sims 4 Poverty Challenge, which brings about a type of strategy and planning you wouldn't typically find in The Sims series, I ended up breaking off a relationship and playing the rest of the game as a single mom with a bunch of kids. Since the pay from a job, the challenge required sticking to low pay teen jobs, would be mostly eaten up by a sitter, I stayed home and made a few bucks writing and doing some odd jobs. However, this didn't really feel that realistic in my opinion, since The Sims simplified self-employment so much, so I created this quick mod that pays your family $335 per week to sit back and do absolutely nothing. It's an absurdly low amount of money, but it's realistic. Welfare isn't designed to make you rich. And here's the prompt that appears in game when you first get approved for welfare. Congratulations, you're approved for public assistance. Well, hopefully you're not too happy. This isn't a good thing. You must report to the welfare office every Wednesday to collect your check. If you don't show up, you will not get any assistance for that week. You cannot have a job while on welfare, and only one sim in each household may enroll. The phrasing there of, hopefully you're not too happy, this isn't a good thing, and it's a ridiculously low amount of money, but it's realistic, welfare isn't supposed to make you rich, is such distilled, unironic capitalist propaganda. Even in the situation that Spintherism describes, where a single mother is having a hard time getting by due to low wages, they've decided to uncritically repeat the talking point that people on welfare should live on the edge of poverty, and that their reliance on welfare is not a good thing. Even though this is basically exactly the kind of situation that welfare in the United States was created to try to help out with. Also, as that prompt mentions, because of the way The Sims 4 is coded, modding welfare into the game required implementing some weird restrictions as workarounds. In order for the welfare job to take up your job slot and prevent you from getting another job, you have to physically go somewhere once a week to perform the job of picking up your welfare check. Once every Wednesday, your sim must leave the house for one hour and collect their check. It will be deposited into your family funds as usual. If you miss your appointment, every Wednesday at 2 p.m., you will not get a check for the week. Calling in sick, PTO, vacation time, and any other ways around this are disabled. You must go there to get paid. These are weird arbitrary restrictions that are a consequence of how The Sims 4 is programmed, which is some amazing unintentional political commentary. Welfare has to act like work because that's how the system is designed. And real life welfare is designed to operate in a similar way. In America, people on welfare are forced to complete all kinds of arbitrary tasks in order to receive their assistance. Drug testing, meetings, monitoring, job search quotas. These are all ways to make sure that people who are on welfare are still operating within the rules of the system. In real life, the only way to cheat the system is crime, which is pretty much analogous to using codes or console commands in The Sims. So if you take those options off the table, it highlights something about the way that both The Sims and real-life capitalism are programmed. 
Mods have to be coded on top of and around the unchangeable rules of the game. The policy of an unemployed sim getting regular, unconditional income just isn't compatible. This is true in real-world capitalism as well, because allowing people to survive without working for the system devalues the aspirational conceit of the system itself. Therefore, it's against the rules. Trying to mod around capitalism results in weak compromises, like a flat $1,000 a month for everybody. To build a fair world, you'd have to seize the source code and recompile a new build of the game, one that doesn't include these dehumanizing rules as part of its foundation. Number five, capitalism is the present. The Sims has a weird relationship with our real world's history. Some parts are apparently shared and imply that The Sims takes place in a fictional country somewhere on Earth, since multiple countries from the real world are mentioned in item descriptions and as vacation destinations. Based on item descriptions, apparently the Black Plague, the Crusades, and the colonization of Africa are all in The Sims canon. And since most of these events are in the somewhat distant past, they don't affect the world of The Sims as we see it. But even in the cases where item descriptions seem to indicate situations that should be visible in the gameplay of The Sims, they're just absent. None of that stuff actually exists in-game. Redwood Hot Tub Back in the early 70s, Sim Nation was full of crazy ideas. Free software, good public schools, affordable housing, and many other fads. While tax rebellions and fear destroyed most of them, the hot tub fad has become an entire industry. And no wonder. With the epidemic triad of overwork, troubled children, housing shortages, Sims everywhere need a way to relax. 100% reclaimed Redwood. This item description is obviously satire, but it's completely out of place here. It's like a message from a gritty alternate Sims universe that actually works like the real world. In other games, the constructed history creates context. It can inform player decisions or tell a story. History in The Sims is just an IKEA product description meant to enhance an object's aesthetic flavor, but completely detached from any greater relevance it should have as a historical object. And that's not interesting just because it's dissonant. This interpretation of history supports the capitalist worldview of how capitalism is fair. History adds context, and historical context is an enemy of the myth of fair capitalism. Capitalism has a long history of supporting discriminatory behavior towards minority groups. And if you go far enough down the production chain on basically any product, you're going to find exploitation, especially in the so-called developing world. And that exploitation didn't arise by chance. In the greater historical context, this exploitation is based on a foundation of immoral acts of self-interest by people in the past. Ignoring historical context, or only acknowledging it superficially, is basically required if you want to pretend that capitalism is fair and not based on exploitation. So in order to get around that problem, The Sims uses the same method as a lot of people living under capitalism today, by ignoring any actionable message from history. History is forced to operate and be retold within the confines of capitalism, which means it's sanitized and defanged into just flavor text. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that someone on the writing staff of at least the first Sims game was aware that this was the case. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Change was in the air. Religion was in decline. Capitalism seemed infallible. Even the laws of the universe seemed uncertain. Posters reflected this heady mix of ideas with foreign compositions, lurid colors, and scenes of luxury and indulgence. However, today, these progressive posters are merely antique accents, used mainly as temporary art for model homes, bachelorette condos, and festive corporate lobbies. Conclusions Assuming that everything The Sims says is true, that capitalism is fun, that it's fair, that it's aspirational, and that it works, we arrive at the worldview of the capitalist propagandist. In this worldview, capitalism is the foundation for a utopian dream world that anyone can access if they work hard enough. And from what we've seen, this utopia relies on willful ignorance of the actual issues that capitalism has as a system. There's a reason why when you're arguing with someone who's in favor of capitalism, they have to try to minimize any issues with capitalism or pretend like they're inherent conditions of the world. Widespread discrimination can't be a big problem because if it was such a big problem, I would have seen it for myself. 
If the third world is being exploited by multinational corporations to make a buck, that's just how it has to be. And no other method of economic organization could possibly alleviate that situation. I thank you for your question, uh, but I have to say we're capitalist. And that's just the way it is. Now, there's just one last thing I want to talk about. The very foundation of society, as is being explored in SDC's Project Leviathan, as explained by the director of the project. The Leviathan Project is an investigation into large military, industrial, and governmental organizations. We induce a large scientific computer to operate in ways analogous to the functioning of large social organizations and learn about such organizations by observing what the computer does. Project Leviathan was run by the System Development Corporation in the 1960s to try to simulate parts of society, specifically the military-industrial complex, in a computer system to try to find better management and organizational methods. From their findings, discriminating researchers are aware, however, of the many fundamental problems that limit the valid applications of simulation studies. Laboratory simulation inevitably creates a problem of interpretation, i.e., of inferring correspondence between the simulation model studied in the laboratory and the real world. This is particularly true when the world created, simulated, in the laboratory attempts to simulate complex aspects of social reality. For instance, if political military gaming is ever to be of more than heuristic value, so as to afford a basis for decision making, the methodology of simulation must itself be subject to direct scrutiny. The problem with simulations is that they're designed by people, and people have biases and assumptions that come from the society that they were raised in. It's understandable that a bunch of white American dudes working for a defense contractor in the height of the Cold War would have some unrealistic ideas about the virtues of American capitalist society. Assuming they actually had the technical knowledge to put together this kind of simulation effectively in an old IBM mainframe, they still lacked the necessary objectivity to make a truly honest simulation that acknowledged the hard truths that they weren't willing to deal with. Even today, when AI technology is advancing at a rapid pace, we're still seeing the same problem. The Sims is a game that's supposed to be a simulation of life. But above all, it's supposed to be a fun game. When Will Wright and his team sat down to start mapping the rules of the real world into their simulation, they were faced with two overlapping problems. What do we do in situations that we don't think would be fun to play through? And what do we do in situations where real world capitalism is obviously cruel and unfair? In each case, they chose, perhaps completely unintentionally, to omit the things that were not compatible with the capitalist propaganda that they had been immersed in for their entire lives. They defaulted to what they knew, and the result of that was the regurgitation of that propaganda. They portrayed America as it is supposed to work, which also happens to be the way that uncritical media delusionally pretends that it actually does work. The Sims is wish fulfillment of a very specific vision of a capitalist lifestyle, one that really isn't that relatable to most people living under capitalism today. And yet, it's very easy for us to look at The Sims and see it as just a fun little life sim without any deeper messages. If it isn't already obvious, this is because capitalist propaganda works. It's usually accepted without question that of course The Sims just cut out the parts of the real world that wouldn't be fun. The result of doing this closely aligns with capitalist dogma. I can believe that this wasn't intentional, but I can't believe it's just a coincidence. Because even Will Wright, is not immune to propaganda. A student is led from step to step at a rate dependent upon his own learning speed.